Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today I'm going to show you the Crafty Storage Unit. Uh, we've already made the Crafty Workstation with the Crafty Dividers and we've made the Crafty Workstation with the Crafty Mini Racks. And then I showed you um, my other Crafty Workstation with the Crafty Mini Racks that I have on my right side. So I've got one on my left and my, one on my right. So I showed you guys that in the last video and then today I'm going to show you the storage unit. Now I'm not going to make this step by step with you guys because we've already done the Crafty Cubbies and the Crafty Trays. It's the same components, you just put them together a little bit differently. Like for example, like my workstation, I have all full crafty, well I'll just show you. So this is the crafty workstation with the crafty dividers on top, right? So this was designed to be used as a project workstation, which means when I am working on a pro, oh I got it wet. Oh no, my water must be sweating. That's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second. So the, I designed this to use um, as a workstation. So when I'm working on a project like a mini album and I'm using a collection where it's got flowers and it's got ephemera pieces and it's got these different little components that I use, whether it be paper clips or index clips or stick pins or whatever it is that I'm using, all of that can be housed in here in the, in the stamps or the dies that we use, whatever, they can all be stuck in here um, cut off pieces, all of that can be stuck on the top and in the trays. So like for example, um, if I had a pack of flowers, I can just dump them out in here and that way they don't get lost. But I can take this tray and I can bring it over to my project and I can look and fiddle about um, if I wanted the, um, this is the C size full tray. You know, I could spread my ephemera out or if I have smaller flowers or whatnot, right? So this is one of my workstations. So I made this on video step by step. I will link it up here and down below. So this is the first crafty workstation we made. And then the second one we made is this one right here. This is the crafty workstation with the crafty mini racks. So these are removable and it also has the top tray um, on top there. So we made this one and this one I also designed this to be uh, used when making projects. So for example, like I might have this whole tray full of rusty goodness, you know, rusty bits that I use on just about every project. Um, that could be in here. This could be little cut off pieces or little scraps that are left over or whatever, whatever, whatever you want to put. Oops. If you decided, well, I really don't need all these smaller trays. You can replace these with full trays or bigger trays. You could put all your, like if you have lace trimmings or stuff like that, like Baker's twine, all that kind of thing can be stuck in these trays. Um, that way they're nice and tidy. They don't go anywhere. Uh, you don't lose them because I lose my stuff all the time, all the time. So this is my second crafty workstation. So this is meant to be project oriented as well. But the other one that I showed you guys in the last video, I didn't have these. I just have one where I've got my tape and my glue and all of that jazz is here. Um, that is on the right side of me and it is more of a place for things to live permanently like my glues and tapes and whatnot. And so that one, I don't, I'm not going to bring it over because it's full right now, but it's like the bottom, this bottom tray, I mean this bottom cubby is empty so I can store things in there, reach them easily and that kind of thing. And so the last thing I was going to show you is the, the uh, storage unit. You guys have been asking me to show you my storage unit for years and years and years. So this, I decided instead of just making it a storage unit, I would turn it into something way more functional and way more customizable than just a storage unit. So anyway, so the cubbies are constructed the same, the trays are constructed the same, the body of it, you know, is constructed the same as we made these. Um, there's not dividers on top, but it's the same exact concept. So that's why I decided to go ahead and pre-make it and not um, make, I'll just show you the things that I did slightly different um, because it's pretty kind of self-explanatory. Um, but I will show you that and I will show you my choices and I will show you how I came or I will tell you why I chose what I did. So I'm going to move, oh this second workstation, this one's um, the crafty workstation with crafty mini racks and I will link that up here uh, and down below as well if you want to follow step by step. So both of these are step by step. 
um, except I did probably refer to, you know, detailed Crafty Cubby from this set. So if you want to see like detailed videos for the Crafty Cubbies and the Crafty Trays and all that, watch this one first. That way you'll learn. And then there's a special video for the Crafty Bottom. But let me move these out of the way. So I want to show you my Crafty Storage Unit. Now I started to make this and it's pretty tall. So um, it's going to be hard to show you. Um, it's almost completely finished. I did run out of the rhinestones that I've been putting on them. So I'm going to try to tilt it to the side here. So um, it's going to be hard to show. Here, uh, this, okay, so here's where the, the uh, trays come out at. Just so, just so you know. <laughs> Crafty bottom. So what I did was I used my floral whimsy here. Let me show you that. This is the Floral Whimsy. It's a digital paper collection. It is available in my Etsy shop and it is also listed down below. That's what the Etsy listing looks like. So I used this paper. Um, it's the purple roses with the distressed uh, purple roses. It's the purple and pink flowers with the distressed script on it. And then I did the same stamping and paper punching. Um, I did two separate strips except this time I put the wider strip on top and then the skinnier strip on bottom. And then it goes all the way around. Right, but I ran out of the little rhinestones. I only got to do the one side, so I need to go buy some more because I need to do this whole back side. And I also need to do this side over here. So I ran out of those little rhinestones. Okay, so here is what configuration I came up with. I have seven cubbies in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cubbies. Right, so I did one, two, three, four cubbies are the A size width which is the deep, you know, the, the biggest uh, opening. So four of the cubby slots are for the A size. And I chose two full crafty trays for that. And see these two both are A full crafties. And then these are the, um, these are the medium in the A. So I've got three of those. And then I've got two of the large in the A. Okay, so then the three up top are the B sized crafty cubbies. So I've got one B size crafty tray, two B size large crafty trays, and three medium B size crafty trays. So what I did was I took a piece of paper and I kind of quickly drew it out and tried to figure out what exactly I want to keep in my crafty storage. Right, so I'm gonna have a tray. This tray here is gonna hold all of my like, um, all of my candles, all of these, uh, what are they called? Um, tea lights. They last for like six to eight hours, these tea lights. I have them linked. I have a special Amazon list specifically for the Crafty Companion. It is linked down below. And in there I've got the um, tea lights linked in there because they, are, they do last forever and it's a good deal. So if you're interested, those I have those linked in my Amazon. Um, and then I know I want places to store my inks. So I've got two of these trays are going to be to house some of my inks. Actually, I probably need to move them around a little bit because I think, um, yeah, I'm going to need to move these around. The, I think I'm going to swap these two or these two. We'll see. So I'm going to, I'm going to fill one of them with, uh, distress inks and, and one of them with archival whether it be brown or black, both. I need one of the trays for some camera stuff. Um, let's see, I like to keep my brads and my magnets and my paper clips um, and that kind of thing in their own little, um, own little crafty trays. So that's what kind of these smaller ones are for. So I haven't like feel, haven't figured out what I'm gonna put in every single one, but this kind of gives me a jumping off point, okay? So I would advise you to take the time to try to plan that out. And since we've already made several of the uh, Crafty Companion projects, you can you can decide whether or not you need a full A size tray or not. All right. So that way you could take just pick one of your trays and 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 start filling it up and see if that's exactly what you need for what you're wanting to store. So as you can see, all the insides are uh, matted with the coffee stained. I just printed this off onto, what did I print this off onto? Oh, uh, instead of the really thick staples cardstock, let me show you what I, what I printed off on. 
So we've been using the Michaels, the 12 by 12 white cardstock for this whole, the whole Crafty Companion set. So I just got several of the eight and a half by 11, 65 pound white cardstock. I bought several packs of this and I just printed um, all of the mats on this paper. So, and it's, it's a little bit lighter. It's not as thick and heavy, but it worked out really good. So I really, I'm kind of enjoying this cardstock. Um, it is acid free and all of that jazz. You don't have to worry about none of that. Yeah, that's what it says, acid free. So this is what you can get at Recollections. Um, I will try to link this in my Amazon list. I don't think I did, but I'm not even sure if I did my 12 or 12. I don't know. I'll have to check. But anyway, so that's what I printed all of the mats on. I really like it. Um, and then what else did I do different here in a minute? I'm going to insert the footage for the crafty bottom so you can see what I did different on that But the only other oh, I did two things differently up here at the top Can you see how it's thicker like this part here is thicker so all the other ones there's like two layers of chipboard well, I keep a really heavy um, Let me show you I keep a really heavy uh, amethyst part of a amethyst geode close to me um, on my crafty storage unit it just I like having it close by so I it's super heavy and so in order for it to not sink in the top part of my crafty storage unit I made this thickness of this board right here four thicknesses of my chipboard that way, I'm hoping that it will help. Um, it'll help. It'll keep it from bending right here in the middle. Uh, my other one, uh, where is my original one? Let me see if I can find that real quick. Okay, so here is my original one that's been sitting next to me for years and years and years. And you guys have been wanting me to show this one to you guys. How do you make it? How do you make it? Well, this is the original one. And this has been sitting on top of this sucker for that, that many years, okay? It's been there forever. So, but if you can see, this is just one layer of chipboard. Do you see how it's like, there's a dent here and a dent here. You see how it's just not very, um, it's not very stable. I mean, it's still held up. You know, this is still a really good <laughs> handmade storage unit. It's not bad. Um, and it's still full of stuff, which is making it super heavy. So I'm just trying to be a little bit more selective on what I keep super close by me. Oh, those are brads. I need to keep my brads close by me. So anyway, so this is the original one. And I used to have different things stuck to the side and whatever. And, and all of that just kind of got on my nerves. So I ended up taking it off. It wasn't serving the purpose that I wanted it to serve. But, um... So anyway, so this was my original one, and I didn't like it. I always had to fight these top drawers, so I wanted to make sure that um, that didn't, or, or try to make sure that didn't happen for this one. So there's four thicknesses. So what I did was I cut four of the top, uh, let's see, the, um, the Crafty Cubbies base. I cut four of them out and then glued them together one at a time just glued them together and you can't even, you don't even know because after you wrap it it just looks like it's a solid piece all right let me move this heavy sucker out of the way okay so that was one thing i did is added some thickness to the top and then in two spots was it two or three I think in two spots. I had mentioned before that you need to, like sometimes if your if your um, cubbies start, oh, you're not gonna be able to see from from this angle, but if they start to like lean down this way, which it can happen, you want to stick a little bit of a wedge of a chipboard. So what I would do, I did it in two spots. I did it here and here. It's a little bit thicker than the other ones. I took one piece of chipboard. This is just one layer of medium weight, 30 point um, chipboard. And I stuck it all, I, it went the whole length, but I stuck it right at the edge um, just to give it a little bit more of a lift up. 
so it didn't start tilting all the way forward. <laughs> um, it's just kind of the nature of the beast when you're constructing with chipboard, but uh, I had to do that in two spots. So no matter how many you make of these, that still can happen. So I just literally took just a skinny strip like this, except it was the full length, stuck it between the two crafty cubbies before I glued them together and then glued them together like normal and wrapped them and did all of that the exact same way. So that was the, um, those are the only two things I did differently uh, than the other stuff. So, but okay, so now I am going to insert the footage where I did the crafty bottom, where I put the braces inside the crafty bottom. Um, and I did say it in the video or in the clip here in a minute, but you can also use this same technique to put dividers in your trays as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, on the on the crafty storage unit since it is meant to house things um like it, the things are going to live there it's not just for projects it's for things that are going to be that are going to be staying there for a long time <laughs> um, they're moving in you know what i'm saying so it's going to get heavier um as you fill it up so in the crafty bottom which is what i'm going to show you today i'm going to show you how to add some support beams so to speak into the crafty bottom so I've already got a video on how to make the crafty bottom. Uh, again, I will link that up here and down below, but that one doesn't have any support beams in it. But for this one, um, we are going to add some support to it. So in the workbook, there is a section specifically for the crafty bottom. And on page one of the crafty bottom section, you're gonna need to get two, uh, you're gonna trace out two of the crafty bottom base which is this one right here, onto medium weight chipboard. Uh, this is a medium weight chipboard. It's about 30 points, about 30 points, and it's about 1 16th of an inch thick. I think, that's yes, it's about 1 16th. Don't use the, I guess it doesn't matter on the crafty bottom. You could use heavy weight if you want to, if that makes you feel better. This one's not as crucial um, on the bottom because your things aren't going in and out of it. So um, you can use whatever you want for the bottom, just as long as it's not lightweight chipboard. I guess that's true, you can't use just anything. So you need two of the bases, and then you need two of the crafty long panel, and you need two of the crafty bottom short panel. That's just to make the crafty bottom box. Okay, so then what I want you to do is, I'm gonna go ahead and move this. I want you to go ahead and make one more, uh, or trace one more of the crafty bottom long panel onto your chipboard. One more of these. And then I think I'm going to do two more. Will it fit? No. Then two more of these little short panels. So one additional long and two additional short. Of course it doesn't fit. I have a bunch of scraps, but I'm not going to dig through them right now. Um, I have, today is kind of a strange day. It's raining outside, which is great. Um, I'm babysitting my grand puppy and my mom's dog, both of which I'm allergic to. My mom's dog more so because her dog is a um, black lab mix. We're not sure exactly. It's got a pinch of something else she does. But anyway, so she sheds profusely and my son took her in when my mom passed away. And then my grandpappy is a golden doodle, so she doesn't shed as bad, but she still does slightly. So my allergies are going berserk and I'm on medication, so I'm trying to make do with the time that I have right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and trim these out um, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so far everything is the same as uh, we were making a regular crafty bottom. So I've got uh, one of the bases, one of the long panels, one of the bases, long panel, and then the two short panels on either side. So I've attached these two to where they have a bend, so to come over like that. These two and this and this one all will come up, right? But I did not add an extra construction strip on these two edges here, just on just on this front edge. So there's an extra tab right here on this front edge, okay? So then I went and made a couple little tiny little construction strips 
Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach these to these two corners. I was debating on doing all four, but I'm not going to do all four. So the two corners I'm talking about are these two that have that are closest to this tab, right? So we're attaching it to the side there. And then we're going to attach one to this side. We're just little teeny tiny little things. But just remember that we're going to be wrapping this thing anyways. So it's going to be sturdy. So don't worry about these little tiny pieces being little tiny pieces. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that backing off of the other side. And we're going to bring these up together to form part of our box. Leaving the extra flappy tab out of the way. We just want to come up and meet the corners together with that little tiny tab we just put on there. And then meet these two corners together just like that so what i am going to do is i'm going to use a little bit of tape and i'm just going to make sure that this corner stays as a square corner i'm just going to add it because that little piece of paper isn't going to keep it from moving around so i'm just going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a help this is just regular transparent tape and yes, I'm still I'm still gonna do. I bought I had to buy two new tape dispensers to show you guys how to make this because I couldn't find another one like it, or I couldn't find another one at home, so I had to go buy just the cheapy cheapy. I, I cut four, but I don't. We're not gonna need the other two. Okay, so I've got this is what I've got so far. So it kind of looks like that. So it still is not a box yet. So eventually it's gonna look like this, right? So then we've got the extra long piece and the two extra short pieces. So let me show you what to do. You can also take this exact same concept and let me find a full one. This exact same concept and add dividers in your full trays or any of your trays. So you just take a front panel and a side panel and do this exact thing I'm getting ready to show you and you can make um, dividers for your trays if you want to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on. Oops, have my craft mat the right way. Um, I'm going to lay this on here, and I'm just going to mark at two different spots. Well, maybe not that far apart. Let's see. I'm going to come one, two, three, four, four inches from each side. Let's do that. Four inches from each side. I'm going to mark it. Just like this, right? And then I'm going to find the center of these pieces. Actually, I think I better use my ruler. I just want to find the center because I want them to be the same. I might just mark one and not the other. Okay, so I've marked on the long piece four inches from this end and four inches from this end. Hmm, yes, that's exactly what I want because most of the pressure is going to be in the middle, so it's going to want to bow down in. So four inches from each end, and then on one of the smaller pieces, I just marked the center. So what you want to do then is take your scissors, and we're going to cut on either side of this pencil mark just past halfway um, just past the halfway mark not the mark because I didn't mark it but the halfway of the piece of chipboard so put focus in, there we go so I cut it I cut a notch out just halfway through you see that so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be sliding them over top of each other like this okay so I'm going to lay this on top of this other piece here and I'm going to mark it so that they're the same. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Tim Holtz scissors and at least go uh, halfway, past halfway. It doesn't matter if it's... Um, 
goes more than halfway. That's totally fine. And these Tim Holtz scissors should cut right through it just fine. Since this is medium weight chipboard, if you're using a thicker chipboard, it might be a little tougher. Somehow, I didn't. Can't seem to grab a hold of it with my scissors. Well, we'll just have to. We'll just have to force it. Okay, so then on this piece, the long piece, we want to do the same thing. Whoops, cut a little too far on that. And so we just want to cut a little wedge out, at least going halfway through or halfway up. Of course, you could do this however you want to. You could use construction strips and you could um, attach it down that way. Um, this way, I'm just going to be using the chipboard and just regular glue to keep them in place. So now we've got three pieces that look like this. There's two chunks missing out of this and two chunks missing out, one chunk on each piece missing out of this. So what you want to do is you want to take the two missing areas and you want to twist it and put them on top of each other until it is a flush joint. Okay, so you want to do that to, that to both pieces. Now see, I cut down too much on the one piece, but that's okay because once we get it in here, like this, it is not going to matter, okay? So what we're going to do, you see how it's, it doesn't even matter that it's a little wonky? It does not matter. You just need to make sure that it fits inside of there. So that'll keep that middle section from denting in. So I'm going to take my arc glitter glue and... I am going to run some glue along the bottom here. I'm going to try to anyway. You're not going to see this, so it does not matter. Whoops. Run some glue. I'll have to add that back in just a second. Right. I'm going to run some glue on this. I'm not being very neat, am I? I'm getting it all over me. But that is okay. Right? And so then I'm going to take, actually first let me take the backing off of this little piece here. Like that. And I'm going to run some glue along the top part here. Well, I'm, I just can't seem to do a tiny little. But it doesn't matter if you get sloppy. It really doesn't matter. Everything is going to be okay. And then I'm also going to run some glue on this tab because I want it to grab it pretty good. So then I'm going to bring this up and over. I'm going to match it up to where it's supposed to be. And just really quick, I'm going to take some of my, my tape here, and I'm going to make sure these sides stay uh, up where they're supposed to be. Oops, I didn't get it a very tight fit on there. That sounds about right. Because remember, we're going to be wrapping this whole thing, so it does not, using this tape is not going to hurt anything. So now we've got something super sturdy right here in the middle. So it is not going anywhere. 
So that glue is going to set up and that'll help. That'll help keep it sturdy. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and wrap this the exact same way we've done all the other crafty bottoms. Okay, so I've got the whole thing wrapped up and covered and inked. I did the stamping uh, on the edge. So everything's ready to go and so it's nice and solid um, in there. It's not going to collapse on you at all. I'm going to grab my storage unit here. And this is empty right now. There's just a bunch of trays. There's nothing in here just yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some fabric tack to the bottom of it and then um, I'm going to glue it down. Okay, I was pretty generous with the fabric tack so I want to make sure that it stays or that it has good contact. Do I have a front and a back? Right, so I've got it upside down right now, so careful not to drop it. So I know you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm just going to place this on top here and wiggle it around until I get it right where I want it. Remove those two bottom trays. Now I'm just going to put some pressure on it. So now I'm going to leave that sit and let it dry and then I'll be back and we will do some, um, we will add some stuff to all the different little trays. Okay, so the crafty bottom is on and good to go. So now what I thought I would do is I thought I would just go ahead and start filling some of my trays here. So this, uh, the first one I decided I was gonna put candles in, my little tea light candles. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've got my other, my prototype, I had one of its drawers full of my little tea lights. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up and I almost made a bigger one like one of the a size full size uh, trays for the candles because you could double them up you know you can like but then i was like no because i have um a kind of a height restriction where the storage unit is going to be and i wanted to make sure that i could put my special crystals and stuff on top of it because i want them close by i use the um i always have my amethyst well you can't see it now but it's I always have my amethyst and then i have two or three other things that sits up there so anyway <laughs> i just want to make sure i got them okay and so then i have a little lighter that i keep in there so i can light my candles so there is one of the crafty trays all filled up so that's i'm sure that that is exactly what i want to go there and then i'm gonna put my magnets in one i'm getting my other my my storage my um prototype storage unit i'm gonna go ahead and put all of my magnets that I have or that I use on the regular in here and one of these uh, I've got so many and then I've now got mom's uh, magnets and these aren't all of them I still have um, more tucked away I don't know if these are all gonna stay put in here okay so my magnets are gonna go in there and I thought what I would do is when I'm working on a project, if we're using magnets, I'll just take this whole crafty tray and put it into my crafty storage unit, if that makes sense. Or, I'm sorry, this whole crafty tray from my storage unit and put it into my workstation if we're using magnets. So that's kind of another thing that I was thinking about when I was creating these templates is to be able to move my components around and have it fit my needs at the time. So uh, I think that's um, one of the things that I might do I might make sure I try to do and show you guys as we're working on projects so there's magnets in one okay then my I have some camera stuff and my prototype over here I had a full I don't know why that picture's in there but I have a full drawer for it but I don't need uh, that much space because my camera doesn't fit in there where's that little piece that I just but I will put all my batteries and my charger, my battery charger in that one drawer there, in that one little tray. 
So there's that one. And then I'm thinking that my inks, I think I'm gonna move, rearrange these a little, I think. Let's see. And matter of fact, I might even rearrange these. I'll show you what I'm doing in just a second. <laughs> Right, put those in there. Right. Okay, so now I've got full, two full crafty trays right there. So I just moved these from here to here, and then these from here to here. Does that, do you see what I did there? Okay. So these two full crafty trays here, I'm going to put my inks in it. One for distress and one for archival. See, right now I had them in because they'll fit in these other size trays as well. So if you didn't want a full one, you just go ahead and do it that way. So let's see, there's one. Let's see, um, there's antique linen, there is black soot, and then I'm currently so when I get done with this project, I'll put the distress photo. Well, I guess I can go ahead and do it now. I'll just go ahead and put that in here and just have the, um, maybe not like that, the ink daubers in here, just like that. And then I've even got some of the re-inkers, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in here. I may not leave those in there, but um, we'll see. So there is the Distress one and then the archival one i thought i had i have more archival i just don't know what i did with it but you can see they'll they'll double up so whatever whatever you end up doing you're going to be fine so there's those because those are what i use the most of what else do i have in here oh there's my brads and then there's clips and things. All right, so where did I have? Oh, there we go. Sorry about the dogs barking. They're being very weird. All right. So I have all of these rusty bits too, and I think where did I where did I? I was thinking about putting them down here in this one because I am really gathering quite a few of these rusty bits, right? So I have these little rusty brads and I have a whole thing of whoop, rusty paper clips. But then I've got all this other rusty stuff, so I'm just going to dump that whole thing in there like that. And we'll see how that works out because I use rusty stuff all the time. And again, if I was using this rusty stuff in my project, I could just literally take this whole tray and put it into my workstation if I want to. So there's that. Um, what was this one in? I don't remember what I had in there. Rusty stuff, I guess. And then we got the brads and the clips. So I'm going to use these smaller things for the paper clips and stuff. Oh, those are rusty. Those are rusty bits. I know these are rusty too, uh, the bulldog clips, but I'm going to leave those there. Oops. But I use paper clips all the time while I'm working and creating. So there's my tray of paper clips. Okay. And then. Let's see, I have brads here. Where's my little bag of brads? Here they are, found them. So I've been using these to attach the handles. So I am going to, oh, that was, I see what I did there. I'm getting my prototypes messed up. Messed up. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put the brads in one of these. I use brads a lot. Alrighty, so I've got brads. And then there's paper clips. And then 
I couldn't decide if I wanted to do rusty bits here or here, but either way, it's fine. So I still have, those are both inks. I have one, two, and then I have all three of these that I can fill. Wait a minute, I have stuff. So I do have, I have a little tray full of just odds and ends, and I know exactly what, what I'm looking for. Um, like I know what's in here, like a little erasers. These are all the different types of erasers, like that's a glue eraser. And then just some random little tools. Stuff that I don't use that often, but you never know. Um, they're, they come in handy when I need them, when I'm looking. And some extra little uh, stick pins for my glues. So there's that. What else? Oh, yeah. And then I've got all of these cards that I use for mixed media and spoons if I'm like getting a bunch of things out. And I'm going to stick this in here too. This is just like a spreader uh, when you re ink your ink pads. So I'm going to stick those in there. And then, oh. Oh, wow, I've just got random. Oh, I have a drawer with needles in. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I don't know where all of my needles are. I'll have to go looking through my old storage unit. But when I go to sew stuff, and here's another one that I've got um, hooked onto my string there. Okay. So I think, let me look and listen, looking at my prototype one right now to see if there's anything in here. Where'd that one go? I've got several prototypes going on right now. Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay. So, I'm not going to get rid of this by any means. I'm still going to keep this close by because obviously you can always you can always use storage, right? So, I'm just going to um, set this one aside. So, I suggest that you do that. I suggest that you make yourself a little cheat sheet. So, now I've got... Um, well, one, two, whoops, this one I'm going to have to uh, do a little work with. I think I've only got two empty crafty trays, which is fine. That's perfectly fine. I can find some stuff that I use on the regular that I need close by to me that I can stick in there and keep. Oh, you know what I do need? I need to get like some more replacement foam pads, that kind of thing um, to add to here, you know, like one of these larger, one of the large crafty trays can hold uh, your extra rolls of tape. They fit in here just fine and that kind of stuff. But I have a, a very large uh, unit that sits behind me that houses most of that stuff. But yeah, so I've got only two trays that don't have anything or use for at the current moment. So that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. And so then I'm going to stick this empty ink tray into my other workstation, like I showed you last time, to get it up out of the way. All right, you guys, that is it. That is all I have for you today. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed making these units with me, all of these crafty storage units. I would love to see all of your all's work, everything that you've constructed, um, and the different configurations that you've come up with. I know I didn't use any of these small filler trays for my crafty storage unit, but I do have them in some of my prototypes, and I have them, I have one in one of the workstations. So if I need it, it's there at my disposal. Um, but what I love about this is I get to customize it exactly the way I want. I get to rearrange it as many times as I want. If I decide I needed a full crafty tray here, well, I just replace it with a full crafty tray. Um, all of that is an and just as a reminder, there is supposed to be a wiggle room. There, well, maybe not so much in the big drawers. They're still little, but there is supposed to be wiggle room so that you can get these things in and out with one hand. <laughs> Some of them may need a little more coaxing, like this one's a little bit, um, this one's getting stuck just a little bit, but I think that's because of the paper on the Crafty Cubby. I just need to go back and smooth it down. Um, but other than that, 
that's it. So guys, you gotta let me know what you think. If you've enjoyed making these projects with me, give me a thumbs up, let me know what you think. Okay, you guys, that is all I have for you today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel before you leave. Make sure you turn that notification bell on. Be sure to check out the description box below or the show more section below. There's a lot of useful information and links down there. And check out the other playlist with the Crafty Companion printable templates. Check out those other projects. And there should be other videos here on the screen that you might enjoy watching. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.